Hi everyone, I've decided to make a mini video series on how to use Amazon Seller Central as an independent author. And I've been meaning to do this for so long, but every time I try to plan out a video, it's just, there are so many different options and it's quite a complicated process. It just, it was far too much to include in one video. So I've decided to break it down into three. And today is the first of those three episodes. So in today's video, I'm going to give you an overview of the different options. So there are different plans basically when you're selling through Amazon Seller Central and the different pricing. And I'm essentially going to walk you through the information on their website and explain it because when I started researching this and looking at all the information on there, there's such a lot, it's really overwhelming. So I felt it would be really helpful to just give you an overview to start with and so you can think about what might be the best uh, approach for you because it's going to be different for everybody. Uh, the second video is then going to be how to set up an account with Amazon Seller Central because it's quite complex, it took me a while. <laughs> so that can uh, definitely fill a whole video. And then the third video will be how to fulfill an order with Amazon. So how to send your books to them uh, if you're using the Fulfilled by Amazon plan. Now, if you're an author that uses print on demand services such as Ingram Spark or KDP, you don't need to do this. So don't worry, this is all taken care of. Those companies will distribute your books for you. But if you have had books bulk printed, you've got boxes of books and you would like to sell them through Amazon because you are the publisher, the distributor, all of those things when you're in indie, then this is for you. This is how you go about doing that. Now, when I was researching this process, I found that a lot of the videos were by people who were selling secondhand books. So a lot of what they do still applies, but hopefully having a dedicated series for the indies out there is going to be useful. So in a moment, you're going to see my laptop screen and I will give you an overview of how this whole thing works. All right, so here we are on the homepage of Amazon Seller Central. Now this is sellercentral.amazon.co.uk because I'm based in the UK. And so this is the site that I use and the system that I'm familiar with. It might be that if you're in other parts of the world, it works slightly differently, I don't know. Um, but I can't imagine it would be too dissimilar. If you do find any differences, so maybe the pricing works differently or the system works slightly differently, please do pop it in the comments. It's always great when the comments become a resource as well. But this is UK specific, so I thought that I would mention that. If you are in other parts of the world, have a double check in case it works differently where you are. Now, before I get into it, I wanted to point out here, it says that to sign up, it's £25 a month, uh, excluding VAT. And I just wanted to reassure you that this is only on one particular price plan. I'll get into it in a moment, but there is one that doesn't have a monthly fee. So if you're feeling worried, we'll go into it in more detail in a moment, but there is a different option. So if I click on learn more, we come into this page. Basically, I'm going to walk through some of the information on the website and how the pricing works. And that should give you an overview of the whole thing. Now you have the option here to download an ebook. Um, it's not got masses of information, but there's it's a really good overview basically. So it might be worth having a look at that as well. And if we scroll down here, I wanted to show you first of all, this part here, choose your plan. So there are two different plans. There's an individual and a professional. And it says here, the individual plan costs 75 pence per sale, while sellers using the professional plan pay 25 pound a month, no matter how many items they sell. Both those prices are ex-fat. Um, so if you sell more than 35 items per month, the professional plan makes more sense. So depending on what you're projecting with your sales, it will depend what plan you go for. The individual plan, as it says, is good if you sell fewer than 35 items a month. You don't mind not having access to the more advanced selling tools. And maybe if you're still deciding what to sell, Perhaps you don't know how many titles you're going to list or exactly what your sales figures will be. If you start on an individual account, you can always upgrade later. 
The professional plan, on the other hand, works if you sell more than 35 items a month, you do want those selling tools and reports, or if you want to use Launchpad or Handmade, which are both available on the professional plan. Launchpad, I think, has lots of extra tools and Handmade is for artisan pro uh, products. So if you're selling other things, you might be interested in those. So you choose your plan. And then if we scroll down, you'll see there's some information here on what you'll need to set your account up, which I'll talk about in the next video. And then it goes into the fees, but I will go over that in a moment. So for now, I'm just going to uh, scroll past. And it says here, what is Seller Central? Well, uh, once you register as an Amazon selling partner, you'll have access to your Seller Central account. Uh, and down here, it says you can use it for tracking inventory, downloading reports, using metrics tools, uh, contacting customer support and tracking your daily sales. So essentially, it's a dashboard where you can view everything that's going on, where your inventory, well, not where it is literally, how much inventory you have, <laughs> how many sales you've had, and you can also see how much each sale has cost you and things like that. Lots of sort of breakdowns on uh, all of your selling. So then we'll carry on down here. There is a mobile version if you wanted to download that and do it on your phone. Now VAT, it's likely that you're not VAT registered and if you need to be that you know that you need to be. If you're not sure, then uh, do have a look. I believe it's if you sell more than 85,000 pounds worth of stuff, which in books is, you know, well, <laughs> hopefully we do, but uh, I'm sure many of us don't. I certainly don't. Uh, or if you're selling in the UK and you're based elsewhere. If you're not sure, do look it up. Um, but if you are that registered, you might want to look in the VA knowledge center to find out the implications of that then we scroll down it talks about listing which I'll explain in a future video and what I wanted to show you next was keep scrolling <laughs> um, fulfillment so there are two different fulfillment options you can do it yourself maintaining your own inventory and shipping products to customers which is merchant fulfillment so literally you're keeping your stock at home you'll get notified by Amazon that you've made a sale and you post it or have Amazon take responsibility for packaging, labeling and shipping products through fulfillment by Amazon or FBA. So each method has its own benefits. Uh, I'll go through the pricing in a little while, but essentially merchant fulfillment is uh, going to save you a little, bit of, a little bit of money. And FBA uh, gives you access to Prime so customers can have your books shipped to them for free the next day, which obviously is a big plus for them. Um, so it's going to depend really on how the pricing works out for you. So that's pretty much what it says here. It gives you access to prime eligibility, free super saver shipping. Um, your products can go across Europe. Whereas if you're fulfilling your own orders, then essentially Amazon charges shipping and you have that shipping credit passed on to you so that you can pay uh, for sending that product out. So the customer will incur a shipping fee if you are merchant fulfilled. Then there's a bit more information on here about um, kind of marketing, running your um, Amazon seller central business, <laughs> whatever you want to call it, um, reviews and business growth, all that kind of stuff. Now, the next thing that I wanted to look at then is pricing. You can look in some more detail here about selling. Actually, the selling tab is a lot of the same information I've just shown you. Um, and fulfillment we'll talk about a bit more in a future video. But really, I wanted to focus on pricing now. So if we go to the pricing overview, what you'll see is we get those two options again. Uh, but let's look at these first. So we've got a selling plan plus the referral fees plus the fulfillment fees and then potentially other costs in there as well. You add all of those together and that should uh, determine what, uh, what different options you might need to pick and whether you're making a profit or not. So if we scroll down, then we get to those selling plans again. So as I said earlier, it's either 75 pence an item, XVAT, or 25 pound a month, XVAT. You get those same uh, comparisons here, and then some more comparisons of what's available on the professional um, plan compared to individual. But I think really the main thing that's gonna weigh these up here is how much, uh, how many books you are selling or likely to sell per month, whether you can afford to be on the professional plan or not. So uh, you'll need to factor in either the 75 pence or the fraction of the 25 pound a month into your per item costing. 
Then if we scroll down, we get referral fees. Now for books, that's either 5.1% for products with a sales price below £5 or 15.3% for products with total sales greater than or equal to £5. And we're likely to be in here selling new books. So it's likely that you're uh, going to have to pay 15.3% of your list price. So add that into your calculations. If you're thinking of selling other, uh, other items, then you might want to have a look at the other referral fees. Books are one of the higher ones. And then if we scroll down, we can look at the fulfillment fees. Before we do though, there is a fee that is not mentioned on this website. It is in the ebook, but they don't actually give a actual figure for it. Once you actually have an account with Amazon Seller Central, there's reference to it in the account itself. I wanted to point it out because it's not in any of this stuff. With media, there's also an extra closing fee. And with books, that's a pound per item. Um, and I believe that's XVAT as well. So um, with other media types, it's 50 pence, but with books, it's a pound, which is quite high and obviously <laughs> a big chunk of the list price of a book. So you've got your plan, you've got your percentage referral fee, and the closing fee of a pound, which, as I say, is not included in here. Even if you do the calculator, um, which I'll show you where that is in a moment, there isn't an option for books as a category, and so therefore there's no allowance in that calculator for the extra cost incurred when you're selling books. So add that pound in. Okay, so the fulfillment fees. Let's look at fulfillment by Amazon first. And now you'll have to pay a fulfillment fee, which is, um, you know, paying for the item to be packaged and shipped, as well as a storage fee. So if you download the rate card in English, it gives you the fees for um, fulfillment. So have a look at how much your item weighs and how big it is. A lot of books are gonna be in this um, small and light program but figure out where you fit. You might be somewhere around this region. Um, there is obviously bigger items down here, standard size and oversize. So figure out where you fit. And then obviously that's the fulfillment cost that you need to factor in when you're figuring things out. As well as that, we have the storage fees, which uh, for books, they'll fit in all other categories. January to September, that's 71 pence per cubic foot per month. October to December, that's a pound per cubic foot per month. Again, I believe that that is X VAT. Um, so <laughs> you'll be adding all of those things together and that all has to come out of whatever your list price is because you're not charging shipping. Um, and obviously don't forget to factor in your cost price for your book and see whether when everything's added together, you're making a profit. I'm going to be quite frank here, it doesn't add up for me. <laughs> and I'm actually gonna move my books from um, being fulfilled by Amazon to being merchant fulfilled because I can't afford to do it any other way. I think you have to have very, very low printing costs right now to be able to use this service. Um, but yeah, figure it out, see how it works out for you. If you've got low printing costs and if you're selling high volumes of books, you might be able to get it to work. Um, okay, so then if we go back up, we can look at fulfillment by seller. So in this instance, you get a shipping credit. So it gives you an idea here, depending on uh, how the customer chooses they would like their book to be sent. And then this is the credit that you receive and that's what you use to pay for your book to be shipped. Um, so essentially, if you can guarantee that you can get that uh, stuff posted out quickly, and if you don't mind handling the actual shipping, the volume of books, again, it depends on the volumes you're handling, Basically, it means that you're not having to take out all of those fulfillment costs from your list price. You get the list price less the referral fee, the closing fee, and your plan, whether that's the individual or the professional, and then actually sending the item comes out of that shipping credit that they give you. But the disadvantage, of course, is that the customer might be put off by having to pay shipping, particularly if they've got a Prime account which lots of people do these days. Now, there's one last thing that I wanted to show you. If you go into pricing, there is a fee calculator, and this helps to see how all those things add up. So if you click on try the revenue calculator, it opens a new tab. Did it open? Yes, it did. And then when that opens, we continue as guest. Now, if you put in the dimensions of your book, I'm just gonna put some random figures in here. Um, 
but if you put in the precise ones for your book, there isn't a category for books. So instead, if you go to everything else, I don't even believe that there's media, no. Um, so then if we put in a price and delivery charge and hit estimate, then you come to here and it shows you the breakdown. So if it's fulfilled by Amazon, you can see that the Amazon fees are the referral fee, so that's the percentage, plus the per item fee. And then we have this variable closing fee. So if I click on that, it will finally, <laughs> we managed to find a place where it explains uh, what that closing fee is. If it's gonna open, it's not opening for me. Let's try again. There we go. And in here, it should say, Let's close this tab, where are we? Okay, closing fees. Um, so starting in January 2021, the uh, it will go from 50p to a pound for books. So because books wasn't a category, this is just put at zero, but it should be a pound. The fulfillment cost, this is what they anticipate for uh, sending it out. This one penny for the storage is how they believe it will divide up when you send them a whole box of books that this is their anticipated storage cost for this single book and you can change it to the October to December price. Other costs, so there's the VAT, don't forget to add the VAT. So they're saying that your estimated cost per unit is £5.19, so your net profit is £2.80 with a net margin of 35%. So you can have a look at what your cost price was for your book and whether you're making a profit with those figures. Um, they also have, if you merchant fulfil, so again, you've got the Amazon fees, there's no storage uh, costs, your VAT in there. So in this case, it is costing you £3.30 per unit. So you're making a margin of 58%. So you can have a look at how that adds up for you and see if you are making a profit uh, on each model, which one might work best for you. Make a decision about the plan you want to be on and the fulfillment you want to use. Hopefully that's a useful overview and then we can go into how to start an account next time. Hit like if you found that useful and don't forget to subscribe for more videos, including <laughs> the next two in this series. Until next time, take care.